Are you taking your face-to-face -face class online? Whether you have decided to move your classroom online or have been forced to go online with little or no notice due to school closures, you may be thinking about how you can connect with your students online. This video will demonstrate two ways to connect with your class online. Make sure to check and follow your school policies about conducting meetings with your students online. I teach AP Computer Science Principles, and due to the coronavirus outbreak of 2020, our schools were abruptly canceled without time to prepare my students. So I decided to hold class online to explain how students could complete online assignments and prepare for the AP test while school was canceled. The following are two platforms that can work to have real-time meetings with your students. The first is to have Google Hangouts, which if you are a Google Suites for Education user, you may have this already built in to your Google Suites. If you are not a Google user, uh, Google has made it freely available due to the many schools that are forced to be closed by the COVID-19 virus outbreak. To connect with your students, it is really simple. First, all you have to do is copy all their email addresses. I did this using our school's PowerSchool. If you have PowerSchool, click in the upper left-hand corner of your grading area uh, of the program PowerSchool or PowerTeacher and choose Email Class. Then at the bottom of PowerSchool or PowerTeacher, you can build the list of emails. I switched to Common Delimited. This allowed it to be copied into a Google Calendar event that I could share with the class. I made the event online. This was super simple, except that on my first attempt, students pointed out that this feature had to be turned on. So I contacted our Google Apps administrator in our school district, and they simply flipped a switch to activate it. It was very simple. After that, I was able to connect with my students in real time to explain their work and how they could prepare for the AP test. In Google Hangouts, I could share my screen and they could communicate with me. In my brief use of experimenting, I did find some drawbacks to using Google Hangouts. One is that I have less control than other platforms, but because it is built into Google Apps for Education, it makes it a simple solution to communicate with my students and even share my screen so they can see what's going on. Some of the students connected with their phones and some via computer, but they could communicate questions to me via chat. The other option that you can use to have your classroom online is to use Zoom. This platform is what I use in my online classes that I am taking, as well as when I collaborate with colleagues across the state or country. Zoom is just as easy to use. I'm going to demonstrate briefly how to connect to both Google Hangouts as well as how to use Zoom. In this video, I want to demonstrate how you can connect with your students online by using Google Apps for Education's Hangout feature uh, in connection with the calendar event. So let me go ahead and demonstrate how to do this. The first thing that I did is I opened up my PowerTeacher account and I logged in so that I could get the email addresses from my students. To do this, you simply open up your grading area of PowerTeacher And in the upper left hand corner where it says class, you can click on it, you can choose email class, and when you choose email class, it brings up the option where you can select all of the student emails. In this case, I selected all of my student emails. I come down and I build a list, but I change the delimiter type to comma. If I choose semicolon, it seemed to have an error when I tried to share out the invitation. I build the list. I copy by pressing Command C all of these email addresses. I then go into Google Calendar and inside of Google Calendar I can create a new uh, meeting or item. I click inside of Google Calendar online class meeting. I'm going to give this a name something that makes sense. Maybe I can tell it specifically which class it is. I'll let you decide but down below it says add guests. Inside the Add Guests, I'm going to paste all of the email addresses that I just found by pressing Command V. These are the ones I got from my classroom. Uh, I can also click on Add Location or Conference. This is crucial. And down below it says Add Conferencing. I'm going to click on that and it says Join Hangouts Meeting and it has a code right there as well. This is going to then send this email out to everybody. I'm going to delete these emails because I don't want to actually send it out to them because they will get confused. You can choose more options to get more details. If I choose more options, I can send reminders. I can also copy the code. I like to also add a description here. 
That way students know what is going on. And once I have it all set up, I can go ahead and click save. Now if you're going to have this at a routine time, maybe you're deciding to meet with your class every day or every week, you can actually choose up here to have it repeat on certain times. I will not go through that at this moment, but you can see how you can set this up. I'm going to click on save, and then when it says, do you want to send an invitation to the Google Calendar guests, I'm going to click send, and what this would do is it would send the invitation. Now because I'm sending it to someone outside of my organization, it lets me know. I'm going to go ahead and invite those. Again, make sure you follow your school policies uh, and procedures when you do this. So I have this, and what will appear in the email of your students is an invitation to join the meeting. The invitation will look something like this. It will have the information, the time. Students can choose yes, maybe, or no. Uh, I had students who chose yes and maybe, uh, so that let me know if they were able to come. And then what will happen is at this certain time, it'll have this link, and students can either join by phone, or they can join by clicking on this link. And if they click on this link, it will simply take them to Google Classroom. And inside of Google Classroom, they can join. It may ask them to turn on their microphone and their camera, but I can simply click on Join Now, and now I'm in the class. And now as this happens, as each person joins the class, they will appear here on the side, and you can see the audio that they have. If you want to then share your screen with those that are there, you can click on Present Now, and you can either choose to present a window or your entire screen. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and click on Entire Screen, and it would show everything that's in my screen, and I can select on here what screen I'm going to do. Now, I'm not going to do that at this moment because I don't need to share the screen with myself, but you can see how simple it is to conduct this class meeting. You can also uh, mute yourself if you want. If it's too loud in your room, you can hang up. You can turn off the camera if you don't want people to see you there. Now, one feature that I really liked inside of this versus other video conferencing platforms is you can turn on captions. Now, I'm not sure if everybody has to turn on captions individually on their computers, uh, but the nice thing is, is it does a pretty good job transcribing what the person is saying if the person has a quality microphone. Uh, as you can see, this is transcribing what I am saying, and it helps if you have a quality microphone. If there's a lot of static or extra noise, uh, the transcribing feature is not going to function as well. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the captions. Oh, there it is. It does show both. So there you can see on the side everybody who would be inside of your class and you can also chat on the side. You can send messages to everybody and you can communicate that way. If your students don't have a microphone they can communicate this way or if they're in a loud environment with their siblings jumping on the bed or dogs barking you could ask them to mute their microphone and then they can communicate this way. So this is how you can connect with your students uh, using uh, built in the Google Hangouts and built into the Google Apps for Education. It's a great way to connect to your students, especially if you're out of school for an extended period of time. Um, another way that you can connect with your students is by using Zoom. Let me open up, let me actually quit out of this phone call so I don't overwhelm my computer. To connect via Zoom, you simply go to zoom.us. Now, Zoom has a couple of different prices. If you click on plans and pricing, I stick with this one for teaching. It allows you to host up to 100 participants. You have a 40 minute time limit, uh, which for my students online, 40 minutes is just perfect to get them the information that they need so that they can continue working. If you want other options, there are other options available, but I, go at, I use this one and that's the one that I recommend. You can simply sign up and once you sign up, you can sign in, that you can sign in with Google, which makes it so much easier. Once you have signed in to Zoom, you simply click on Schedule a New Meeting. You give the meeting topic. Add in a description. You can 
choose a time of day uh, for when this is going to happen. Now one thing I did not notice when I did this the first time is make sure you set the time zone. Uh, I accidentally set it to Pacific time zone rather than Eastern time zone, which is where I live. And it confused a lot of people because even though I said the time was at one time, they looked at the invite and it was for three hours later because it was based on Pacific time zone. You can make this a reoccurring meeting if you're meeting with your students at the same time every day. You can have a personal ID or generate automatically. I simply did this. You can have this require a password if you want to make it so that only those that you give the password can access. And then you can also have, this is what I like about this feature more than the Google Hangout, is you seem to have more control. So the video, I can turn on the host video. If I don't want to see the video of my students, I can turn that off or I can leave it on. Um, I can allow people to connect via their computer or via telephone. And so I can go ahead and choose that. Um, I recommend both. That way there's option if they don't have the internet but they still have access to a telephone, they might be able to connect. And then it says meeting options. So you can allow them to join before you get there. Um, you can turn on mute participants on entry. And I find that to be good because as students show up, they may not show up all at the same time. And you don't want them to show up and start talking as you're trying to give information to the entire class. Uh, so I recommend doing this. You can also let, enable a waiting room, uh, which basically pops up in the right hand corner when they come in and says they're there. Do you want to accept them? I found that actually to be kind of annoying having that because I had to keep accepting them into the room. And then this button here says record the meeting automatically on the local computer. So you click on that and you click save. The thing about recording is this worked very well. I just clicked save after I did my um, event. It was recording automatically and when I was done, it just said saving to your computer. Now, if your computer's hard drive is full or near full, you may have some troubles with this. Uh, or if you have an older computer, this may add some processing to the computer and slow it down a bit. But I did it and it worked just fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and click save. Once I have saved this, it has all the information that I need, and I can send this to somebody by copying the invitation. And if you copy the invitation, you can see this sends it out, and it looks like this. Basically, it's the same thing that we saw in the Google Hangout, is you can have a link to join, you have a meeting, or somebody can uh, call, but you pretty much have this invitation, you send it out, and people can join by going through this link. So I'm going to copy the meeting invitation, which I really don't need. I just need this. And when you're ready to begin your meeting, you log in here and you click start this meeting. Now notice how it says that Zoom may need to download an app. Mine's already been downloaded. If you have not downloaded it and it's the first time you do it, you simply click download. It's a small file. It downloads quickly. And then once it's downloaded, you just click open Zoom app. And here it is. Here is the Zoom app that you can use. And it has a few more features than the other one. You'll notice in the upper right hand corner it's telling me that it's recording. You can pause this or you could stop it. Uh, I can mute my video or my audio. Sorry, I could also mute my video if I don't want to have the video. I can invite more participants. I can manage the participants who will appear here on the side. Uh, I can also mute all, which is a great feature, especially if you're teaching high school students and they're overly excited about a new video game and you just want to mute all so that they can hear you. You can do that. Um, anyways, you can go through. You can also share your screen just like you did in Google Hangouts. So you can choose what to do here. One thing I did find when I experimented with this is that participants can actually draw on the screen. So if you want to annotate or if you're teaching something that requires more than just um, uh, if you require something that requires more interaction on the screen, you can do that. You can also have people do interactions here. And so this was a great, uh, this is also a great option uh, for communicating with your class online. It's very simple. You just share the invitation out with them. They come in and then when you are done, you can just come in and go to end meeting. And it says, if you want to keep this meeting open, please assign another host. I don't want to end it. I don't want to keep it open, so I'm going to click end for all. And I choose that. And now it says the recording is converted. 
when the meetings end and here it's going to take some time to convert this to a video and it tells you where the saving is, where the video file is saved or you can choose your own location so you can put your own location let's say I put mine on the desktop I can choose that location I can give it a uh, I save it there and it tells me it basically saves it inside of a folder it has the mp4 it has the audio and it has probably some sort of player so great feature uh, I really think this is a great way to connect with your students make sure that you follow your school's policies but uh, I hope this video has been helpful for you good luck and have a great day connecting with your students I hope this video has been helpful in identifying ways that you can connect with your students online I don't recommend this for younger students but I found it to be a valuable resource for my AP high school students. If you use other conferencing tools with your classes, please share them in the comments so that I can learn from you and others on how I can better connect with my students, especially now while schools are closed due to the coronavirus outbreak. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have successful interactions in your online classrooms. Have a great day.